Hi, my schoolers, you are welcome to my school channel, and my name is Aviola. Remember, in this channel, you join me to solve the jam CBT past question for the subject physics, the year 2012. Do not go anywhere, stay with us, because we'll be right back. Back to my school YouTube channel, and in this video segment, you are joining me to solve question 29 to 42. So, join me as we begin with question 29. Ray of light travels from a less dense medium to a denser medium. That statement one, two. The angle of incidence is greater than critical angle. Statement two. Then, statement three. Rays of light travel from a denser medium to a less dense medium. Okay, so these are the three statements we have. We have to validate this statement or which of them should be correct or is correct. Okay, so which of the statements above are conditions for total internal reflection to occur? So this is very easy because once you know the definition for total internal reflection, reflection, you can determine which of the statements is correct or which of them are incorrect okay so let's look at statement one rays of light travel from a less dense medium to a denser medium this is incorrect okay it's actually from a optically more dense medium to a less dense medium okay so this is incorrect statement one is gone statement two the angle of incidence in the denser medium is greater than critical angle so i can give you to this statement two is valid Statement 3, rays of light travel from a denser medium to a less dense medium, okay? This is also correct. So, statement 2 and 3 are correct. So, where do we find that? We find that in option C. So, option C is the correct option. Question 30, the use of lenses is not applicable in the world. That is in the periscope, okay? So, let's discuss the reasons okay so the projector you know um the condenser in the projector consists of two plano convex lenses okay so what they do is that they collect light from the light source and they're on the slide another function so we are talking about um, lenses here okay two plano convex lenses that is here then for the human eye you know the high ball you can talk about three parts the outermost the middle and the innermost okay the sclera the choroid and the retina and of course you can find the lens there so let's say for instance a long-sighted person okay cannot see a near object so how do you correct that you use convergent lens so of course lens is mentioned here lens is mentioned here so let's look at per periscope in periscope you are seeing the practical application by of uh, practical application of reflection by plane mirrors play mirrors not lenses so this is an exception here okay your astronomical telescope all right so you are talking about two convergent lenses as well so lens 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 plane mirror p for plane mirror so option c is the correct option 31 dispersion of white light is the ability of white light to do what to separate into or separate to its component colors okay this was first performed by sir isaac newton so we are talking about roy beef okay red orange yellow green blue indigo and violet so this passion of white light is the ability of that white light to separate or white light to separate to its component colors so option d is the correct option question 32 a newly charged 12 volt accumulator can easily start a car, whereas 8 new dry cells in series with an effective EMF of electromotive force of 12 volts cannot start the same car because the current ca carrying capacity or the current capacity of a dry cell is low, okay, compared to the accumulator. You know, the accumulator can supply hundreds of um, the amperage or ampere okay hundreds of it okay but compared to the dry cell it cannot because the resistance in the dry cell is higher when you even compare it to the accumulator so the accumulator can supply such amount of current that is needed to start a car but the dry cell cannot okay so this is due to the current carrying capacity so the correct option here is option b the current capacity is low 
Question 33. The fuse in an electric device is always connected to the life side of an electric supply. Why do we do that? So that when there is a um, current that exceeds what should come in, okay, once that current is coming in, this will act as a safety device. Okay, it's going to open up the circuit. That is, it will cut off this current flow so that the wiring or that particular appliance will not be damaged even in your three pin plug okay when you look at the connection okay the the blue wire which is connected to the left okay of that three pin, uh, pin, pin plug okay uh, that's the neutral the blue is the neutral it goes to the left why the light that is brown goes to the right that is also where you can also find the fuse okay it's just a short length of wire with a um, very low melting point okay then to the top okay that is where you have your striped wire okay and it's connected to the top so even for a three pin plug the same thing the fuse is connected to the live wire brown all right therefore even in um electrical supply or whatever is connected to the life side of the life wire so the correct option is option c life side of an electric supply don't forget to use the link in the description below once you click on it it's going to take you to the my school website okay right there you can get the my school mobile app or the my school software for your laptop computers and what have you so join me as we solve question 34 a particle carrying a charge of 1.0 times 10 to power minus 8 coulombs enter a magnetic field at this speed, okay? At right angles to the field, okay? So, if the force on this particle is 1.8 times 10 to power minus 8 newton, what is the magnitude of the field, okay? So, we right here, what we are looking for is the flux density or the magnetic induction. And this is the formula that we are to use, okay? Magnetic force, this is the charge. Alright, this is the average velocity of the charge, which is the flux density, then this is the angle. We are given this as theta. So this is what we are looking for. So we are going to make B the subject of the formula. So which means you are dividing both sides by this. Okay, so the same thing happens here. So I'm going to have B equals F right over Q V sine theta. Okay, where our theta is right angle, that is 90. Right, that will be F. The, the magnetic force is given as, um, okay, a particle of carrying a charge of 1.0 times 10 to the power minus 8, okay, enters a magnetic field at this speed, then the force of the particle on the particle is 1.8, so that will be 1.8 times 10 to the power minus 8, divides the Q, the charge that we have here, which is 1.0 times 10 to the power minus 8, right then we have our v average velocity at um, 3.0 times 10 raised to the power minus 2 okay then we have our theta at right angle 19 degrees so sine 90 is 1 okay so that is just 1 times this is still the same thing so i'm going to have something like this 1.8 times 10 raised to the power minus 8 Okay, 1 times 3, that is still 3, right? So, I have minus 8 times to change to plus, right? Minus 8 plus minus 2, that makes minus 10. Alright, so, this implies, if I want to change this to 18, I'm just going to add up, right? That will be 18 times 10 raised to the power minus 9, okay? Divided by 3 times 10 raised to the power minus 10. So that should imply this will come under 18 over 3. I'm trying to work with our calculator. Okay, you can punch in these values and you get your answer times 10 raised to the power minus 9. Right, divide means minus, then this minus 10. So minus times minus that is plus. Okay, so minus 9 plus 10 that is plus 1. So I have 18 divided by 3 that is 6 times 10 raised to the power 1. That is still 6 times 10 and that makes 60 tesla so that's the unit for flux density or magnetic induction so let's see if we have 60 or 6 times 10 raised to the power 1 in the options provided so join me as we move and that is of course found in option b so option b is the correct option do not forget to hit that like button also click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notifications so you can get notified as soon as we upload the next video segment 35. 
the current output from an AC source is given as this, okay? The DC equivalent of the current is what? It's just very easy. You just have to take this peak value, all right, for the current, yeah. The peak value is given as 10 divided by root 2, that is 1.4. So 10 divided by root 2 should have 7.142 or 1 to 4 thereabouts. So roughly 7.1. So the correct option here is option B, 7.1 ampere. 36. A conductor of length 1 meter moves with a velocity of 50 meter per second at an angle of 30 degrees, okay, to the direction of a uniform magnetic field of flux density 1.5 Weber meter square, okay. So what is the EMF induced in the conductor? So this induced EMF, you're talking about a straight conductor, when the conductor moves across the line of force of a uniform magnetic field. So you can determine the direction. Direction is given by the Fleming's right right hand rule okay something like this this is what we are talking about okay so um, we have the formula as B uh, V then sine to ta. the B is given the flux density is given as 1.5 which is the same thing as 3 over 2 okay so I'm just doing that to be able to work without using a calculator the length is 1 meter the velocity is given as 50 Okay, times our theta is given as 30 degrees. So sine 30 is 0 0.5 or 1 over 2. 1 over 2 is the fraction form for the decimal 0 0.5. Okay, so 25 times 3, that makes 75. Divided by 2, okay, that makes 37.5 volts induced emf so let's see if we have this given to us in the options in the question okay given so when we look through the options we can find that in option a option a is 37.5 volts option a is the correct option 37 the process of detecting a pin mistakenly swallowed by a child is x-ray diagnosis or diagnostic x-ray or radiography okay you want to check what is inside the body it's just a kind of special method all right when you talk about therapy you are talking about a disorder a mental or psychological disorder that you're using a psychological means okay to take care of um, take care of so we have a um, crystallography in crystallography you are studying crystals and you can also employ the use of x-ray it involves the use of x-ray crystallography mammography you're talking about the breast okay you want to check you want to detect if there is a um, tumor or there's a kind of growth in the breast mammary gland all right so the correct option here is option a for diagnostic x-ray or diagnosis 38. Which of the following cannot be deflected by both electric and uh, magnetic field? Electric and magnetic field, rather. Okay, that is your gamma ray. This is a type of electromagnetic radiation. Okay, it's similar to X ray, uh, but it has a shorter wavelength and more penetrating power. Okay, so it's emitted by, we're talking about radioactive. Um, elements okay like cobalt 60 or a reactive substance like cobalt 60 okay and it can be detected by the gamola tube okay so the correct option here is option a for gamma rays we know that it is electrically neutral no electrical charge so once again gamma ray is the correct option that cannot be deflected by both electric and magnetic field option a do not forget that we have solution providers waiting to help you out. All you need to do is to click on the link in the description below. It's going to make you get to the My School website. Okay, there you can ask your questions on the spot, and our solution providers are going to help you out. So join me as we solve question 39. A piece of radioactive material contains 1,000 atoms, okay, this is a misspelling, okay, if its half-life is 20 seconds, okay, the time taken for 125 atoms to remain is what, this is very easy, okay, so that means we are told the half-life is 20 seconds, that means after 20 seconds you'll be having 500 atoms left, okay, so that means after the next 20 seconds, that is after 40 seconds, you are going to have 250 atoms left. Okay, then after 60 seconds, you are going to have 125 atoms left. So, 
what will be left what time okay the time taking for 125 atoms to remain is 60 seconds so the correct option here is option d for 60 seconds it's possible that you have better steps or explanation in tackling any of the questions we have solved so far please would like to know all you need to do is to use that comment section below kindly indicate the question number and the explanation or the solutions you like to share question 40 the pn junction diodes can act as rectifiers because okay at first you should know that their current voltage characteristic does not obey the ohm's law so this happens when the p conductor okay when you connect it to the positive terminal then the end to the negative terminal so it's going to show a low resistance to current flow so the pn junction diodes can act as rectifier because they conduct current when forward bias and they prevent current when it is reversed bias so the correct option is option a conduct current when forward bias 41 if a reversed bias voltage is applied across a pn junction okay the depletion layer width is what is increased until the pd potential difference across it okay equals the external bias voltage so what we are saying widens or increases so the correct option here is option a the depletion layer width is increased here for a reversed bias voltage so option a is the correct option Question 42. Which of the above are the advantages of semiconductors? You know, semiconductors, you just find them in between um, conductors and insulators. Okay, so we are talking about typical examples like your germanium, silicon. Okay, and um, so let's go back to the question. So which of the above are the advantages of semiconductors? We talk about small size, of course. They have small size, low power requirements to operate. Yeah, this is very correct. Not easily damaged by high temperature. I think this is where we have to be very careful, okay? So we know that um, semiconductor, they are, the ability to conduct, okay, it increases as temperature increases. So as temperature increases, their conductivity increases and resistivity, resistivity decreases, okay? As temperature increases, conductivity activity increases then resistance drops okay so this is it but we are talking about high temperature so one of the things or some of the things that semiconductors do not like is that sudden change in temperature okay um high heat high amount of heat which is what we are describing right here okay even in cases probably are trying to solder it or something so this um not easily damaged by high temperature for me it's a no no so it is of course highly durable it is very efficient okay so which of the above are the advantages of semiconductor this is a disadvantage that i'm saying here so i will take statement one two and four i believe you have your contribution as well and it is very much welcome so i'm taking statement one two and four as the advantages of semiconductor so i can find that in option c so i present option c to you Right there, we've come to the end of this video segment, but there are definitely more content to come. All you need to do is to hit that like button. Also, click on the subscribe button and always tap bell notification so you can get alerts immediately we upload the next video segment just for you.